trip that we've been planning for and working towards for a year is finally here. We're doing the Oregon BDR. Yeah. Trav is literally dying over there. We have bad luck with this desert, this area. Ooh, chunky, chunky soup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Trav is leaving us today. Ben, please uh, describe your plate situation as well. It's a piece of wood. So I could just knock it over and that's your home now. Oh, but look at the view. Look at the view. Okay, 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 get out of your head. Get out of your head and just ride. We've been separated for an hour. He finally catches up and then doesn't even stop. Feels good to have accomplished this. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. <laughs> I am in Fields, Oregon, just miles from the Nevada border. It will be 90 degrees today, and I'm unbelievably excited because the trip that we've been planning for and working towards for a year is finally here. We're doing the Oregon BDR. So we are starting here in Fields, and if you come to Fields, you have to get a milkshake, and if you're doing the BDR, you have to come to Fields because there's nowhere else to get gas. And then we are going to hit the trail. We're going to be in the desert today, 120 miles to plush. The weather forecast says it's going to be in the low 90s every single day, so that kind of sucks, but this route being half desert and half forest, it's really hard to find a sweet spot where the weather's good the whole way. You either, it's cooler in the desert and there's snow in the mountains, or you wait till the snow melts and the desert is hot. So we have about half desert, half forest, and a lot of people don't understand or realize that Oregon is half desert, and we're going to show you a lot of it today. So section one, we're starting in fields. Technically, the route starts in Denio Junction. There isn't anything between here and there. We're getting a shake getting gas and then we're going to hit the desert the most remote section of this route of the entire bdr and uh, the expert section the hardest section of it is today it's going to be an interesting day out there in 90 degree heat i'm here with trav and tim and i'm so stoked to get out there and make this happen and my shake's ready so here's here's why we come to field station let me show you and what i love about it is they don't even give you a straw they don't even bother with a straw this it's not that kind of shake shake pov Look at that. No straw necessary. What's up, Tim? What up? Did you get a shake? I did get a shake. That's unbelievably good. Is it? What'd you get? That looks like uh, Oreo? Cookies and cream? Butterscotch Oreo. Butterscotch Oreo. Tim is here. The two finishers of last year's BDR. This is my breakfast. Well, Tim, how do you feel right now? How do you feel right now as we start the route? I feel good. What are you thinking about? I feel like it's getting hot already. Trav? What? What are your feelings as we start this momentous journey? It's going to be warm today, but it's going to be fun. Like you say, it'll be type two fun. We're probably not going to enjoy it while we're doing it, but we're going to enjoy it a lot when we're done. Yeah. And then never come here again. Yeah. Well, this first leg was type three fun. Well, fortunately, we know one of the guys who had a huge hand in designing this route. So if it sucks, there'll be a lot of damn it, Nathan, today. Yeah. Well, I'm concerned about this is the section I've been spent the most time worrying about. So I guess it's good to get it out of the way at the beginning. It's the longest, most remote, has the hardest section as the expert section, and if something's gonna go wrong, this would be the worst place for it to happen. I also don't have the fuel range to make it all the way. Trav's gonna carry an armadillo bag for me. I just drooled. 11 o'clock, we're getting started. So right into the hottest part of the day for the rest of the day. So I have some concerns about this trip and I wanna share them with you, not like to be make excuses if things don't go well or whatever, but really just to talk about the mental preparation and in a realistic outcome of big goals and uh, lofty ambitions and sometimes life gets in the way. So my original plan was to start, hit it hard in January and try to lose a bunch of weight. I know you, if you guys remember the apology video, I gained a bunch of weight last summer. I got kind of depressed and things just weren't going well and I haven't really been able to shake it. I tried to lose a bunch before Mexico. I dropped about 15 pounds. That really helped, but uh, I have not made any progress on that goal until two weeks ago. I finally got my together and dropped 50 or 12 pounds because I got back on keto, the only thing that's ever worked for me. So I was hoping to be about 40 pounds lighter on this run. I was also planning to get a bunch of exercise, like I was going out walking a mile every day, trying to build up my physical stamina, and then I blew out my ankle. I sprained it really bad three weeks ago. It still hurts. Again, not an excuse, but I wasn't going to miss this trip. We've been planning it for a year. I built this bike specifically for this trip. So I had all these plans to be in much better shape and, and lighter and so that the heat wouldn't bother me as much. 
they all failed, but I'm still here, I'm still doing this thing. So it's either a cautionary tale, don't be like me and attempt this, depending on how it goes, if you're physically not up to it, or it's inspirational because uh, I'm showing it that anyone can do it, even a dude pushing 300 pounds. We'll find out if I can do it. Today will be the worst day and the biggest test. All right, we're officially out of fields. On to the Oregon BDR. The trip we've been planning for over a year has begun. Let's get out, let's have a blast, let's crush this route, and let's show the world what Oregon is all about, baby. Let's get to the route. Here it is, the beginning. We're off the pavement. Whatever, it's just the hottest part of the day going through the desert, what could go wrong? Woo! We are in the desert, fellas! Oh, some very fun. Uh, river gullies here So far just this hard pack the little loose stuff on top and a lot of drainage ruts So you don't want to go crazy Crazy fast because this is the exact type of drainage ruts Mike broke his leg on on the water last year check out that video if you haven't So our plan of attack is to be a little bit more cautious this year Because of all the mishaps and not push it so hard. It's gorgeous man, but there's a lot of this a lot of this this bike, oh my God. And I'm gonna do a full rundown of this build because you've seen it part way, but not since I did like the last three major things. Uh, the last of which was the suspension, which is a night and day difference, oh my God. So big shout out and thank you to Paul at Evo uh, in Forest Grove who did that for me. I mean, I paid him, but he did it. And uh, I would, Trav's bike was also set up by him. So highly recommend you go check him out. Uh, if you need suspension work in your local. Oh yeah, this thing. The road riding was unpleasant. This thing, this is where it shines. This is what we're after. Wow, if it was muddy here, this would suck. Look at these ruts, man. That's, that's newish. This is like recent. I know it rained up here just last week. So as hot as it is, I guess it's better than trying to do this in the mud, which would be a real nightmare. Somebody's just ranching out here. Look at this, just living, no big deal. It's just where they live cattle guard. There's also some wicked huge cattle guards out here, I guess. This must be the road here, yeah? Yeah, there's some cows. Oh man, what a day. What a life. Five years ago me is insanely, well, not even jealous. I didn't even know enough to be jealous of something like this, that, that this would be something I would ever feel like I could do. Like, it just was so out of the realm of possibility. I never could have even conceived of it. I'm just so glad I found dual sport and adventure riding and became a part of this community. Adventure was not really part of my life before that. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. We're going over these mountains. You can see the road. It's gotta be the road because there's no other road out here at all. Ooh, that's a little sharper than I was expecting. Gonna be a hot one, boys. Oh, was the new suspension doing its job. I don't know what I hit, but I did not see it. This is not gonna, not gonna do it justice, but we are going up quick. Look at that. Wow. That is super cool. That is super cool. Oh, fun switchbacks, okay. Nope, no time to stop and putz around. Let's go up. So this route, supposedly, according to Nathan, who has ridden the most routes and also helped plan this one, uh, is top three, most difficult of all the BDRs. In fact, I think in his est estimation, it is the third most difficult and uh, consistently difficult. So it's not like easy, 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 hard section. There's just a lot of challenging stuff built into the route. And I can see if you're newish, this right here would be intimidating. Uh, it's a lot of factors. It's hot out here, steep, a lot of loose stuff. A lot of step ups, oh my God, wow. So I really don't like the way the front, uh, okay, or I could kill it, also fine. Yeah, I got sidetracked looking at the view, and I screwed myself. Talk less, ride more, dude. Look at that, look at that. Oh my dear God, man, oh my dear God. Like we are, we are 20 miles in, not even 15. Look at this. Wow. Here comes Trav, the MVP of the trip on his big bike. A little 
loose, definitely bouncing all over. Holy crap, man. This is a beautiful state. We're blessed to live here. There's a cairn. I'm assuming to mark the pass. Wow. Cool. Neat, dude. Okay. Problem with staring at the view is if you do it too much, you become part of it. I don't want to do that. So, let's ride and let the B camera do its job. I think this is Domingo Pass. Uh, I'm not going to stop and look at the map, but I'm pretty sure it was right out of fields. Damn, dude. Not a bad beginning, huh? Not bad at all. Problem is, I don't want to stop and take pictures because it's too hot. But the camera on my chin takes pictures. 30 of them a second. Wow. Super cool, dude. Super cool, bro. Super cool. I want to thank Trav and Tim for coming on this trip. Really glad to have those two guys here. The two I've ridden with the most, I think. So it's really nice to ride with a group of tight-knit guys or people that know each other well and can handle each other when we're less than rested and, you know, maybe a little snippy. There is a dead snake right there in the road. <sighs> I don't think that was a rattler. He was too small. But that is a real concern out here. Snakes and scorpions. Yeah, another reason to keep moving and keep your boots on. You know, I was not expecting it to be this gorgeous right off the bat. Something to see. God, what an experience. What an experience. Thanks for coming with me, viewers. There's some junk. Some fun stuff. Yeah. Good times. Talk about how remote this section is. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this. And that's our road, just goes off to the horizon. There is nothing out here. You definitely need to be self-sufficient through this section. There's no shade, there's no relief. The only relief from the heat is to keep moving, and that's what we plan to do. Look at this road. It just goes forever. This is <laughs> super cool, and like, it makes you feel terrifyingly alone and on your own. Like, there is nothing. Like, this is an ancient seafloor. So we're essentially on the bottom of an ocean that was pretty damn wide all by ourselves. Section one, everyone. Uh, you can see, I don't know if it'll come across on the camera, the lighter colored sections up here, that's where it gets a little sandy. We're starting to see some, some gritty sand. Hasn't been super loose yet, but keeping an eye out, it's another reason to keep the speed reasonable. You don't know when you're gonna hit that stuff. The super silty moon dust out here. It's like powdered sugar. We know we're gonna hit sand out here. I've spent a while <laughs> acclimating myself, trying to become more confident. So, let's hope that pays off. Honestly, more worried about Trav given his recent experience in sand. Yeah, this is the gritty stuff. It's not bad. Not bad yet. Not bad. Anyway, it seems like we're gonna be on this straight line for the next half an hour, so. I'll catch up with you when we have a corner. Look, a legit desert oasis. This is all open rangeland, obviously, so you have to be very careful when you're encountering cows and calves and be very respectful. Beef, it's a pun. You got it the first time, you're smart. There's a black cow. That water smells really awful, so I will not be stopping for a swim. Ooh, cow shit. Maybe I'll crash in it again like Mexico. Let's hope. Uh, Ooh, okay, that was sandy. Yep. All right, found a little. First sand right after the cow puddle. Road's getting a little more interesting. Sandy, climby, a little more twisty. Got some more chunk. For what, an hour? Hour in? Hour and a half, maybe? Been a uh, good pace so far. But it's definitely getting a little more technical, as you can see. Gotta pay attention and slow down in the middle of freaking nowhere. It's just a really, like, reminder. Like, you really feel the need to be careful out here. Oh, Nathan, what must it have been like just out here trying to find these roads, just taking every freaking random desert road you could find? A lot of work goes into scouting these routes, man. So I've already run over a snake and a sage rat. As an animal lover, I'm not really excited about either of those things. But I guess I'd rather run over a snake than find one in my tent or something. Keep your eyes peeled. Damn it, I had to stand up. I'm trying to be lazy. I mean, conserve energy. That's, that's my strategy. Energy conservation. 
It's nice this has been run a lot already because you can see the lines people took. And honestly, often the ones that have been taken the most are a good choice if you're not sure. Chunky, chunky salsa. We're taking a right right here. Oh yeah, we are. Oh, a ton of cows. You heard? I heard there were a lot of cows out here. Man, my calves are sweaty. <laughs> no bull, no bull. Actually, I'm not sure if there's a bull. Wow, oh, this isn't much of a road, is it? This is two track through the desert. Only the cows use it. Yeah, these little tiny oases. Starting to feel a little sand duny, to be honest. This could be interesting. Okay, we're gonna go right through this herd of cattle. You know, I'd be a lot more comfortable if I was driving a cow to lack. Hey, fa hey fellas, they're ladies. These are mostly ladies, sorry. No, you don't have to run. Just passing through. I'll just move on. How is this the track, Nathan? Damn, dude, that's awesome. Okay, that's steep on the backside. This will be fun. I'm so much calmer on this trip. That, that scared me a year ago. I'm just like, well, I guess we'll climb up it. I don't know what else to do. Sounds like a plan to me. Oh yeah. No worries. No worries. No biggie. A little rutted. A little steep. A little shenanigans. Whoa, it's a little slippery actually. The rear is spinning on me. Not a lot of room to navigate here. I got in the wrong track. There we go. Usually the, the uphill side is better, but not this one. Okay, stop looking while you're riding, dude. This is just enormous country. It's just huge. Like you can just see until like tomorrow. Well, not easy. Again, solid intermediate route. Not for the faint of heart or brand new. It's not like the craziest, most harrowing stuff, but it's not like turn your brain off and coast either. Those are some cool looking rocks. A lot of rain ruts and big rocks to navigate. Kind of lines of other people been taken. Well, there's not really any great ones. This is Pinch Flat City. That's why we run full inflation. Not screwing around with Aaron down out here. Not interested in Pinch Flats, thanks. This is pretty cool. This canyon here. We, uh, the pace has slowed down some because it's a lot chunkier and sandier, both of which are things I don't want to experience unexpectedly going 40 miles an hour. So picking our way a little through this section, you can see it doesn't get a lot of two wheel traffic, obviously. Ooh, a gate? Is it a gate or just a cattle guard? That's the other reason we don't haul ass down these? Yeah, you don't want to, like, I can't, I couldn't see that barbed wire until just now. The rule with gates is, if it's open, leave it open. If it's closed, leave it closed. What does heat stroke feel like? Like this? I wonder. This is why they wanted me to lead. So I had to deal with this. Well done, boys. <sighs> Pretty cool. Coming third gear, not ideal. Yeah, I see. <laughs> the line I want's over here. I'm not going through that. That's the kind of mud you don't recover from. Yeah, that's no good. We really covered a lot of ground on this fast gravel, so. Let's keep going. Wow, I just, this is so cool. So fun. Here I am, fat, middle-aged, overweight, out of shape doing this. Adventures for everybody. You can have adventures too. Maybe you don't jump right into something like this, but you could be there in a few years. If I can do it, you can do it. Interesting little switchback. Huh. Awesome. Ooh. Yep, okay. Oh, that was fun. Where's the road? Where's the road? Let's see. That's it. 
Trev! Trev! This way. What the fuck is he doing? Well, I don't know what Travis is doing, but he's been standing there for five minutes. And we're holding up the overlanders behind us, waiting for him. So I think we're just going to go and he can catch up. Because he's obviously not in distress. But this is a chunky, steep-ass road. Loose and off camber. Whoa! Just hit a rock, knock my foot off the peg. That's why you gotta put your toes in, kids. Okay. I'm just gonna go through this bush. That was that was better. That was a better line. Through the bush. That was what I wanted to do. Yeah, here comes the rig. Where's Trav? Travis, what is the problem, dude? Did he not he saw us, right? Okay. Oh, well. I'm, I'm gas now. There's no way I'm doing baities. Why didn't you signal us? Like, I was like, well, let's just get to the base and see how we feel. Yeah, I know I'm not doing baities. Okay. I muscle here and I'm out of energy. Okay. All right. Well, continuing on. Apparently, we abandoned Travis and didn't even know. In his hour of need, we are terrible friends. Whew, this is a weird road, man. It's almost like road in quotation marks. Well, Trav was stuck and couldn't get turned around, and we didn't realize it because the whole time I was watching him, he was just messing with his camera. So uh, he's uh, he's not feeling great at the moment. Uh, understandably, when it's 90 degrees and you're trying to muscle a huge, fully loaded adventure bike around, so we get the air flowing for him and keep going. We're not in a hurry. Again, I'd like to get out of the damn desert, but it, we don't have to do that <laughs> until some point today. So we can take it at a measured pace if need be. And that's my fault for having too many bikes. It's a Real first world problem, you know? Oh, my wallet's too small for all these 50s and my diamond shoes are too tight! Oh, I smell sagebrush, dude. I smell it. Cool cliff rock face over here. I assume. Whoa! That's a rut right there. Damn, bro! They must be on comms. That was really synchronized. Thanks, guys. Trav took a wrong turn again. Oh my god, he's not navigating well. Travis struggling right now. I don't think his GPS is helping him any. Well, no man left behind. I better go back for him. Oh, he's down. He's down. Where the f are you, dude? Is that a road? I think the turn he missed is up here. I should be able to get onto the road he's on, theoretically. This is it. Oh, that was close. I was on the ground myself. Uh, this is not a road. I'm gonna leave this right here. Travis finding exciting new ways to traverse the Oregon BDR. Done that to me three times now. So it's all big bike friendly until you have to do that, recover it on a hillside. And then it's much easier, you probably saw, with the dual sport to get it turned around when you need to. Damn. Yeah, that being easier is worth like all of the un, uh, discomfort of riding it out here, which I didn't do this time, but if I had, Anyway, all of that happened, and uh, that's why they call it adventure. Trav's good, but he's winded, and heat stroke is a real concern out here, so it's probably best we just get him to some shade. Uh, but we are only about halfway done. So I'll get him to take some electrolytes when we stop. If we stop, we'll have to stop at some point, because I'm going to run out of gas now. There's Tim, I think. I hope. Oh, that's Tim. Okay. Can you take... You want a pill? Electrolyte or something? Oh, no, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm worried about you heat stroking. 
Well, this scrabbly hair scrambled trail is the road up to Beatty's Butte. And Trav is already gassed from digging his bike out twice. Tim is not really feeling it. And that little rescue we just did basically used up the extra energy I had. I think it's safer if we just keep going. So we'll have to hit up Beatty's another time. I do really want to see it, but um, like I said, I think we need to slow down and just concentrate on getting to camp and finishing this route. So um, maybe that's a consequence of all that stuff I said about not being physically as physically prepared as I wanted to be. But also, I'm going to go with what the group says. And uh, since I was on the fence, I might have attempted it if Tim was like, "Oh my God, I don't, I don't want to miss it." But <sighs> there's always another day. So let's get. Uh, Keep moving, we are barely over halfway through the route. Yeah, this doesn't seem smart right now. That's the expert section, so we'll skip that expert section. We're definitely gonna do Cache Mountain, and I don't think we're gonna be able to get to Three Creeks Butte, but it's all right. Discretion is the better part of valor. It's optional for a reason. Yeah, that's probably smarter I stay behind Trev. I'll sweep for a while. He's doing fine, he's just on a big bike, so he's just a lot more tired. Don't read into this as like, oh, Trev, Trev can't handle it. It's not at all what I'm saying. I would be in a much worse position than him were I riding that bike and had to do the things he said to do today. Ooh, water crossing. Fun. See one of those out here in the desert. Ooh, splashy. There you go. Now my feet are cooled off. On some silt, but even this is it's just a thin layer on the hard pack. I think the stuff isn't all the way dried out yet. Oh, that whole road was silt. <sighs> but the, um, the terrain, the, the surfaces are changing. We're getting into a lot looser, finer stuff and out of the, the more coarse, sandy stuff, it looks like. There's the bunker. I knew it was out here somewhere. It is not a POI on the map, we just know because Nathan told us about it. But that's definitely it up there, on the hillside. I think I'm filming? It's Mike and Danny. What the hell are you guys doing out here? So you guys always ask me what happened to Mike. There he is. He's fine. He's crushing it. Back to crushing it. They had a they had a head start on us this time, and we caught them. What's up, man? How are you? These guys tell you I'm bad luck. You don't want me riding with you. Yeah, we'll ask Mike about his leg. I think it's because I was there. Well, he did. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm really tired of being in this damn desert. So there is a closure up on Heart Mountain. That way, right? So now we're attempting to get off the track and just find the straightest way through. Which sucks when it's a brand new route, I guess. Someone in the Antelope Refuge doesn't like all of us riding through. So, it's been an interesting, an interesting last hour. Trav is not feeling good. Wait, so that is a no to the ball thing? Okay. Everything's a f***ing joke. Yeah. Trav is literally dying over there. I feel bad even filming anything. Tim's making dick. Well, he's not going to train. Anyway, it's been an eventful last hour. Met up with Charles and Danny and company. Uh, got separated from them and Tim. And then met Charles again. And then Tim came back. The thing I said earlier about how we should slow down and stick together. Yeah, that plan went right out the window. But now the three of us are back together. Trav is really not feeling well to the point where he's getting a little dizzy and getting some tunnel vision. So he had to pull over and just get in the shade. And we're trying to get him electrolyted and hydrated up and get him the hell out of this desert. The route is closed. We're improvising at this point. We know that if we go back, there's a guaranteed route, but it's like 50 miles. It looks like we can get straight through here towards Luke Lake. So, uh, and the other group is ahead of us. So if it is blocked in some way, they'll come back. So I think the plan is to try to get out this way to get to a campsite or something ASAP. Safety first, you don't leave a man behind. So, you know, we didn't do babies. We're gonna miss part of the route, whatever. You know, the point is to, to get everybody back to camp. So that's our priority. A little better, so we're gonna go slow, get some air moving for him. Jerry and Troy caught up to us. So we're gonna stick together and try to get out of this damn desert. The good news is Charles and company went on ahead this way and they have not come back. So they must have found a way out or they're all dead. And if they're all dead, we will pillage their water replenish our supplies from their corpses and continue on our way. Probably won't do that. Depends on how hot it is. Okay, we're moving again. It is 4.05. We're very excited to move out of this desert as soon as possible. We are all very excited to never ride section one again. Although we're not even on section one right now because they closed the gate at the wildlife refuge. But it seems like a dick move on a brand new route that just opened. And unless someone was out here poaching antelope, I don't understand the reasoning. Which one of you was it out here poaching antelope on the first week this was open on the BDR? Not cool, man. 
I'm gonna assume this is the road we want, but I honestly have no idea. Okay, well, I'm exhausted and I wanna get out of the desert and I have nothing witty to say, so. That's the update. You good, bro? Yeah, He's just lost his nerve. He's very, very tired. Ooh, very, very, yeah, this is a riverbed. Very river rocky. Not awesome. Not awesome. <sighs> yeah, we have bad luck with this desert, this area. So Tim is riding Trav's bike through for him. This is not at all unlike the day we got stuck in the Alvord. Boy, it must be nice to be 6'2 and just be able to walk a bike like that. I can, I'm tiptoes on my best day. Whew. Yeah, Trav's not doing good. We are off the map. Like, we are not even on a road on the map right now. But it's going in the right direction. And going back is probably a two-hour ride through some of the really tough stuff. So we're pushing on. Uh, we really got to get Trav out of the desert. And French Glen Road is right over there. Which is what we need to get back to semi-civilization. We're going to keep going and hope for the best. I, there's, I don't know what else to do. I, it's extremely, extremely bullish whoever closed that road in the Antelope Refuge because you're 80 miles into a route in the middle of the desert and you get turned around, like that is super dangerous. You need to post a sign somewhere or something. Like literally someone is gonna die uh, or at least have to be life flighted out because somebody just changed the gate or something. Like there needs to be a sign that says way back at where the bypass is, like take the bypass because Heart Mountain is closed. I just, I get that the two things aren't sound intentional, but... Update, where are we? Yeah, yep, we're almost back on the road. I don't want to take the left, I want to go straight. Yes, okay. We're very close. French Glen Road is right there. Right there. The road should be right up there. Should be right over here. But I think that's the road, it is. Oh, thank God. It's the road. Fluke Lake Road. We made it to whatever road this is, but it's a main road and I will take it. Well, we made it to the Heart Mountain Hot Springs campground. Trav is in low power mode and has been for a while. Tim is Mr. Ambitious. Um, all I did was strip off my riding gear and bust out the thermosel because the mosquitoes here are unbelievable. Uh, because there's a little stream over there. They are even, like I have my thermosel going and I have used about a half a bottle of bug spray and they're still biting me, so. And I don't normally get bitten as much as other people because my blood type is apparently one they don't like. I don't know, that's science or something? We found a little shade, which is good. We found a spot which is gonna have shade in the morning, which I'm pretty excited about. It was a long, rough day. Trav was having a moment. I have thoughts about section one. I don't know if this is gonna be my definitive conclusion, but I almost feel like, unless you really, really, really have to say you did the whole route, maybe it's worth skipping because 150 miles in the desert leaves you very little margin for error. And so Trav got stuck and had to dig his bike out by himself because we didn't know that happened. And then got misdirected because the GPS sucks and we had to turn it around. And like those two things were the difference between, that was where the energy reserves went, right? So we had nothing for Baby's Butte. And really it came, it got to the point where Trav had to stop and just, cause he was, he was heat stroking, he was. And uh, out there, it's no good because you don't have a lot of options. He rode out like a badass, only had to let Tim ride his bike the one time. And, you know, all, all we wanted was the closest possible campground or place to camp with a little shade. And so the closest one was Heart Mountain Hot Springs. Here we are. I don't really know that I'm going to go jump in the hot springs, but they're here. This was more about finding a place to pitch a tent, cook some food, and probably go to bed early, I'm guessing. I'm very excited to get to plush tomorrow. I have a half a gallon of water, maybe, and it's about 75 degrees, the water, not the temperature outside. That's still probably 80. Uh, so I'm eager to replenish. The creek being here at least is good because since I have to boil water for my dehydrated meal and my coffee anyway, I might just use the stream and save the drinking water for drinking. Or what, 15 miles from plush? <laughs> Cuban rice bowl. 
good to go company from Moto Camp Nerd. Thanks, Moto Camp Nerd, for sending me this. So I gave it a lot of extra time. This is gluten free and vegetarian. You know, two of my favorite things. This good to go company, it's a lot of pescatarian, vegan. So if you're into that, they have a lot of options. My guess is it just tastes like food, which is what I need right now. Rough start to the trip, really was. We knew today was going to be the worst, but I didn't anticipate travel almost dying bad. So um, we'll see how we progress, but we're all here. We have our stuff. We have our wits about us. We have our tent set up. We have a mosquito repeller. And we have an early bedtime, I'm guessing, as soon as the sun goes behind that mountain. But tomorrow's another day. My guess is we're done in five days, if not sooner. So I hit my pants today. Just after 6 a.m. The mosquitoes were swarming like nobody's business over at camp. Trav's just getting moving. Tim's still asleep. I'm covered in crap from the dusty, sunscreeny disaster yesterday. So I'm getting in this hot spring. There's nobody over here. No, not the worst morning of camp I've ever had. It almost makes up for the mosquitoes. And I'm looking forward to an easier, uh, more exciting day today, hopefully. Less exciting in a bad way and more exciting in a good way. Oh my god. I'm a mosquito buffet now. Again, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. How you feeling, Trav? Ready to ride hard and fast and have a great time? I absolutely am not. <laughs> well, I just wanted to introduce you to the to the ninja we brought with us and also all the damn mosquitoes because holy hell, I'm gonna try to enjoy some coffee. Have some blood left in my body when I start riding in a while. Oh, campground visitor. That is a big deer, but we are in the refuge. <laughs> Tim's mosquito avoidance procedure is novel. But coffee, it's innovative. like priorities. It's innovative. It's There it is. That's the word I was not thinking of. Well, we are very tired of the massive swarm of pterodactyl mosquitoes, so we're gonna hit the road, try to get to plush, and hopefully we can get gas. If not, our plan is, well, it's gonna have to change significantly, but there's reports that the plush gas pump isn't working and there's only one, so we gotta go find out because I don't have that much range left. I only have as much as I do because Trav carried fuel for me yesterday, so big thanks to him. This is a beautiful campground, but only if you like bring a mosquito net for your whole body. Otherwise, the natural beauty is diminished somewhat by the wildlife. You ready to go, Tim? All right, bye-bye hot springs. We're back on the road to plush. Let's get there. Day two. Well, we're in plush and there's no gas. And there's also gas in the Dell, which means we have to go to Lakeview. 40 miles. We're here at the Heart Mountain store in Plush, Oregon, which is supposed to be the only gas stop in this part of the route. At the end of section one, obviously we've stretched our fuel capacity to the limit over the 150 mile section and their, their gas pump is broken. And the next closest town is Adel, which is 20 miles away. They're out of gas, so we are gonna have to go to Lakeview to get gas. Tim wisely looked at the route. Tim wisely, I don't use those two words together very often, but he looked at the route and was like, we have to go to Lakeview anyway. We may cut out a, set, a part of section two instead of backtracking twice, but that's supposedly the fast, easy part anyway, so we're just gonna go right into the worst part of section two after we get to Lakeview to get gas. There was a nice guy in an overland rig here who gave us his extra gas, so I think I have enough fuel capacity to get there. We've just been lucky, and again, one of the things that astounds me when we take these trips the most is just the kindness of strangers, the way that you know, if you're in a bind, if you need something, someone's always there to help out. Uh, we're gonna have to improvise a little. I hate not riding the actual route, like that bothers me more than it should, but the point is to get from Southern Oregon all the way to Hood River, mostly off-road, and we're gonna do as much of the route as we can. And it is nice to maybe skip parts of it, so when you come back, you get to see something new. But Trav's hurting, we're gonna get him some food, we're gonna reevaluate from there. And our, our biggest priority, obviously, is making sure that Trav is feeling good and safe and sound and confident so whatever adjustments we have to make we're more than willing to make. Trav how are you feeling today? I am still in survival mode. 
So I'm, we're hoping he got a big old chicken fried steak coming. We're hoping that'll. I, I think he needs to eat because he's just been losing things out of his body and not putting anything in. <laughs> anyway, the food's here. Thought I filmed all this already, but the camera's being done. It's delicious. Make sure that you stop into the Heart Mountain store. Um, I would stop here anyway. Yeah, the lady's been very, very, very accommodating and helpful. I'm just going to let us fill up our waters, which is good because we have none left. We're going to start strong. Today's going to be a whole nother day. Stomach full, cactus canteen mostly full, hydration pack full, gas tank as full as it's going to get. Getting back on the road to Lakeview in our improvised version of section two. Trav has made the decision wisely, I think, to skip section two entirely and ride ahead to Christmas Valley and meet us there. And I think in his condition, that's a good idea. It's a good call. He's a good guy. And uh, we'll see him when we get to Christmas Valley. But first, 40 miles of highway to get back to the route for us. But I'll spare you more highway today. Anyway, we're back off road. We're back on the route. I'm annoyed about the desert. We lost Trav, but I think he made the absolute right call, so I'm really glad he did. I was going to try to encourage him. He's not doing that macho shit, which I appreciate. Not a shade tree in sight, baby. I've never seen that Abert Lake before. I didn't know that was out here, but that's a huge lake with a bunch of salt flats on this end. Yeah, bro, let's do it. Let's do it. Love, I love is making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Yep, seeing some sandy. Oh yeah, yep, actual sand. Look at that. Finally hitting it. We found the sand. Oh yeah. Not too bad here, but we just went through a really thick patch of it. Knew it was out here. Lots of half-buried rocks in this sand. It's annoying. It's like Pinch Flat City. Found some chunk. The road is definitely getting a little uh, bumpier, you might say. Oh, I see a lot of sand up there. A lot of it. Ooh, chunky, chunky soup. I told you there was sand up here. It doesn't look bad. Yet. It's not bad at all. So far, anyway. Well, we're down here in and among the dunes, so there will be more. There will be more. Oh, this bike is crushing it, dude. It's so good. So good. Paul, your suspension is impressive. Impressive, dude. He was gonna jump that with me. He did not. on the up and downs so that you get this chunky chunky see when I said that thing about it not being that bad and what immediately happened yeah that's how it goes that's why you just don't say things 
can just keep your mouth shut. Rocks, sand, rocks, it's almost like desert out here. Sand, rocks, sand, gonna go jumping up in the air. Chunk, intersection. Ooh, here's some sand, hell yeah. This legit sand. Oh, yes it is. Yes it is. Ooh, with ruts, my favorite. Infamous cattle guard is up here somewhere. We're close to it. Rocks into sand, into rocks, into sand. Yeah, the suspension is good. It's so good. Worth every penny. Sand. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, it is. That's sand. I don't want to fucking navigate this stuff blind. It's too many huge rocks that you don't want to nail and not know they're there. Oh my god, chunky, chunky. Campbell's chunky soup. Look at this. Real chunky. Oh, that was a huge pile of cow that he just obliterated. I gotta see a slow mo replay of that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh yeah, there's a lot of chunk on this end. A lot of chunk. Very chunky. There's the cattle guard. The infamous cattle guard. So you see it's at the end of this long sandy stretch. And then BAM! Big ass steep ramp. Crazy. Yeah, it's like you come around a corner and you're like bombing through. And this cattle guard is two feet high. Yeah, that thing's nuts. Yeah, okay, it's not as steep as it looks, but sand, air, land and sand, interesting. That's the cattle guard. Decided there have been enough disasters on this trip already. We're just going to ride over this and not jump it with our fully loaded bikes. But, uh, you know, those of you who do, kudos to you. I just film it and tag me, please. That's all I want. And we're off! Adventure! Hey, holy hell, that thing is steep! Damn, dude, that was something. That was something. What a guy is Tim. What a guy is Tim. See, I was complaining about the sand not being deep before, and now it is. Fun times. You wonder how the uh, Tusk D Sports do in sand. The answer is quite well. They've been very pleased with them. Really like these tires. I think I just tacked my linkage. I felt a very hard hit in a very weird place. Yep, chunk. Ugh, lots of chunk, lots of chunk, lots of chunk. Chunkity doo dah, chunkity a. My oh my, what a chunky ass day. Plenty of chunky coming my way. Chunkity doo dah, chunkity a. Holy sh there's some real sand. What are we here? Oh, another enormous valley with lots of rocks. Ooh, Tim got the sandy line that time. <laughs> Ooh, this is fun. That is a sharp rock, dude. With that. Oh, that's a little sharper corner than we were expecting. <laughs> we're both like tensing up. I could see it. It's like, oops. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that to happen. Oh, it's really hard to see the big rocks when they're covered in sand. Oop. Okay, too much dust. Too much dust. There we go. Cleared it. You can 
frequency all the way to Christmas Valley. So it's got to mean we're close to Christmas Valley. Using context clues, I conclude that we are close to Christmas Valley. Whoa, oh, 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 you okay? Tim? You all right? Okay. You having too much fun, buddy? <laughs> you got it on camera? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's okay. Yeah, I just came out of the cab. Also, look at this giant loop bag he just crashed on. <laughs> Nothing, dude. Just dusty. Oh, all right. First crash. Tim is fine. Bike looks good. The bag is no worse for wear. Just screwing around, having too much fun on this loose. It's like hard pack with like a thin layer of gravel, so it's real slippery. And uh, he almost saved it. That was that was close. I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him a half a point for that. But anyway, there's Christmas Valley, so that's where we're going. But never a dull moment when you ride with this guy. That's why we wear gear, kids. Sounds like this whole part of Oregon had real trouble with uh, planning ahead for the 4th of July. They're out of regular gas here too. Well, I'm gonna offer to get this one, but it's not because I'm a cheap ass and I know we only need half a gallon each. It is my, it is my turn. Trav is at a restaurant. We're gonna go meet him after we gas up. We are here in Christmas Valley. Completed at least the part of section two that we did, which is about half. Um, took us a while and we got here and Trav, um, who has not been feeling well and, and left us for the second half of today, uh, had booked two hotel rooms. So we're staying at uh, in luxury here in Christmas Valley tonight. Trav's really still not feeling great. So I think a re the rest this afternoon, rather than trying to ride out and find a campsite, is probably good for him. And of course, we're trying to keep keep the group together. So we're going to hang out. And uh, I took a shower and that was amazing. So that was not a treat I was expecting to get on this trip. And we're just going to hang out tonight, see how Trav feels in the morning. I'm worried we may lose him. So let's hope that we don't. Cross your fingers and send good wishes to Travis for a speedy recovery. But it's starting to seem like maybe it's more than heat exhaustion because he should be feeling better from that by now. So I don't know. Well, that would mean just me and Tim again, which maybe we're cursed and anyone that goes with us doesn't get to finish with us. I don't know, but we'll figure it out. But the bikes are definitely broken in. Very dusty. We had a lot of dust today. But let's see what the boys are up to. Boys, what are you up to? I came in here to see what you're up to. Travis sleeping in my bed, so great. Tim's showing us his good side. Yeah, it's going to be really good content tonight, I feel like, so stay tuned. You know, quaint is not a word that I use often. It always seems a little condescending to me, but this is a very quaint hotel room. Tim and I, I think, are gonna call it a night here real soon and get real rested up and caught up. Honestly, I'm super tired. Like, the riding today was very fun, but I'm exhausted. We're looking forward to getting through tomorrow, getting in some cooler temps because there will be trees and less desert after tomorrow. But I also just read on the internet that tomorrow is, uh, section three is, three and seven are among the hardest. And this is not an easy route to begin with. So we're gonna rest up, be ready for the challenge and hit it hard tomorrow. Good morning. It is day three. Is it only day three? Wow. Of our Oregon BDR adventure. Sad news for the rest of the trip. <coughs> Trav is leaving us today. He is still not feeling good and he needs to get home and uh, get to a medical professional who can examine him and ensure that he is getting better. So uh, really sad to say and sad to see because we've been planning this trip together for at least since February, right? right. Since the route was announced. Yep. But we're going to finish strong in Trav's honor, and once again, I'm stuck with Tim. <laughs> He's sleeping. He's not sleeping much. I, I do this on purpose. You like to, it's like you're trying to ship me and Tim. <laughs> you keep putting us together. Oh, do you have, do you have any, any final thoughts for the people? Um, be ready for rocks, Thomas. On the first couple sections of this route, uh, be ready for heat. Take a crap ton of water. Take extra breaks. Don't overextend yourself and don't push yourself. You will get into trouble, which I think is where I'm having way issues from because I didn't, I didn't crash. I didn't, I didn't have to lay the bike down, quote unquote, or anything like that. But I'm having some gastrointestinal issues that are that need to be seen about. So yeah, you don't want to see them. I don't know. I got no jokes. I haven't had any coffee yet. Poop joke. Ha. Huh? Coffee no in brain need brain good. Right. So sad to see Travis go. Tim. Ben. Are you ready to two man this or what? I am so ready. He's so ready. Because he has no choice again. We're here at the gas station in Christmas Valley. We're fueled up, we're caffeinated, we're ready to go. And I just noticed, and by me I mean Tim just noticed that my fender bag is gone. So
I know we had it when we stopped at the cattle guard yesterday, but it's gone now. So that was my tire changing kit and all my tools. Fortunately, Tim has a full tire changing kit and also somehow magically a 32 inch or 32 millimeter, 32 inch, 32 millimeter spanner for the rear axle because the 690 is the same size. So I wasn't expecting that, but I guess I'll be building a new toolkit when I get home, but we're gonna soldier on because we have a backup. That's why it's important to have redundancies, um, but we lost Trav. But this is the earliest start we've had. We're gonna hit the trail and maybe even be through the hardest stuff before the hottest part of the day. That's what we're crossing our fingers. 100 miles of desert. Let's go. Now here we go. I think it's this way. Looks like it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's supposed to be 90 degrees, but this is the first time we've hit the trail before noon, so I'm optimistic with four hours between us and the hottest part of the day. Maybe we can get mostly done. I'm not gonna say we're going to because we've had enough bad luck, but yeah. So let's ride, it's gonna be a blast. This is the first time we have just jumped right into dirt, right into the sand. It's Christmas tree lane, by the way. Rabbit! Oh, another rabbit, holy shit, that was a big one. There's another one up here. It's Rabbit Central, look, big ass rabbit. <laughs> That's funny. Wildlife! Sand. Okay, this, this is so much better. This is, we're out of the desert desert and into the high desert. I grew up in the high desert. I love the high desert. There's a tree now and then, so shade is actually accessible. I am so much happier already. And we are, I don't know, not even 10 miles out of Christmas Valley. Familiar territory. Oh, and just trees, man. Just the oppressive lack of shade in the first two sections is brutal. So it is just nice to be in something that looks like a forest. There's gonna be sand, there's gonna be rocks. Trees, I love trees. Finally starting to get into the Oregon that I know and love from my whole life. So you get a lot of variety on this route. We're definitely going from my least favorite to my most favorite type of terrain. Ooh. A little slipperier than I was expecting. <laughs> Almost pulled a Tim there. Oh, I'm sad Trav's not here, but I think he made the right call. So better safe than sorry. Got to stay healthy, buddy. But we'll be thinking about you. <sighs> yeah, that's the campground right there. Anyway, there's a campground up there, it looks like. So if you get to Christmas Valley and you need to push through, there's a campground like 10 miles up the road, it looks like. Look at that. Look at that. I see Black Butte. Oh, baby, we got some vistas now. We got some vistas. This is very Primeville, Ben Sisters, East Fort Rock, Millican, all that stuff. It's exactly what this reminds me of. Whoa. Holy shiza. Wow. Cool, dude. That's pretty, man. That's where we're headed. We're going that way. Whoa. Neat. Got some uh, fun rain ruts on this one. Hold on a little bit longer. We found that sand I kept hearing about. Yeah, this is, uh, we're on a dune right now. Yeah, sand, buddy. All right, so the sand, if you're looking for it, it's in section three. You get a lot of time to correct mistakes on sand because you can just put the wheel back where it's supposed to be before anything goes sideways, literally. Sand, 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 lovely sand, sand, sand. Beautiful sand, sand, sand. Well, if you don't like sand, section three is not gonna be your favorite, but it hasn't been bad so far. It's just, it's just uh, maybe an inch of sand right now. We'll see. Pretty happy I'm on this bike though. Although I did get a lot of big bike sand experience in Mexico, so I feel a little better on it on the Tenere, but much rather be on this bike. Oh yeah. The problem with sand is there's no contrast, so it's all the same color. I can't tell where the bumps are. It's hard to tell if you're gonna hit like a big whoop or if it's just flat and you can blast through. Standing helps because you can see farther ahead and you're better prepared for whatever you hit. Trav probably wouldn't have been digging this today on the big bike. 
starting to see some more chunk and some more deeper sand. Oh, that was, yeah, that was very deep sand I just found. Little, little fish taily, little swervy swerve. Yeah, see, it's these chunky sections. And I'm only even mentioning it so much because a lot of the people in the BDR groups and the, uh, honestly, the people we've met along the trail have been like, oh, there's a lot of this chunky embedded rock. Like, that's the worst thing. And it's like not easy to ride at speed, but it's not terrible. You're on the risk of pitch flats and stuff, which is why I don't recommend airing down even if there's sand. Already saw a post from a guy in the group. Bit my rim in two places, running my Tenere at 13 PSI. Yep, that's your problem. I don't air down on this stuff and I don't think you should either. Only like on a sand dune where I knew I was gonna hit nothing but sand. Like, and I knew there wouldn't be any embedded rock would I air down because honestly the performance increase, it's not so much that most average riders are even gonna notice it, but you will notice getting pinch flats and having to change them in the desert, so. That's my pro tip of the day here on section three of the Oregon Badur. Like, right, here's some chunky. Some chunky monkey. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. On the left, it's kind of bad. Over here on the right, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Ooh, ooh boy. Okay, okay. You're actually gonna have to ride now, buddy. That was real sand. No more of the screwing around. Ooh, that should be a good pop over that if you got it on the camera. Oh my God, getting started earlier in the day is a dream. I'm actually enjoying myself, not just trying not to die. Here's a good one. Oh yeah. Woo! Yes, I'm having fun. Oh, it's been nothing but stress the first two days. Yesterday we had fun for about an hour, but this, oh, it's not so hot. The terrain is familiar. I don't feel like I'm on the surface of Mars, stranded a thousand miles from help. I'm just riding, man. Woo. Sometimes, and especially if you're like me and you just have anxiety about shit, you gotta stop worrying about what's ahead and enjoy what you're doing and I have to consciously force myself to do that sometimes so I try really hard to acknowledge when it's happening and it's happening right now this is fun this is fun Okay, we're through the gate. It looks like we're headed to a fun section. So this has been a pretty, I would say, well-traveled road. It looks like we're getting onto some sandier, more two-tracky stuff. So it could get interesting. Uh, we're not halfway, maybe a third of the way through this section. Starting to heat up, so I'm ready to get moving. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty proud. I'm pretty happy to say that I've been holding my own so far. I'm not slowing Tim down like I was last time. Uh, different bike helps, for sure. Another damn gate. Because uh, <laughs> we're riding through a pasture right now. Do I wait for Tim or do I make him deal with it himself? I guess that depends on how long he takes to get here. I'll let him close it. How about that? That's a nice, that's the way to go. <sighs> Will you close that? Okay. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. Definitely a change of terrain or at least road condition. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This is not a road. It looks like it's a runoff track most of the time. This is a little bit more single tracky. All those rocks everybody's been talking about. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Slid down a little there in a way I didn't like. <laughs> wow, this is cool looking. Sage brush. Okay, that's a rock I didn't see. Whoa, still whacking the camera on things. Nathan, oh Nathan, how did you find all these roads, dude? How did you do that? The gates are neat and fun at first. Uh, I'm past that point now. I'm tired of them. Yep. <sighs> Continuing on for another 25 feet and then probably gate. You know, I might have to start a scandal about all these gates. They'll call it gate gate. Uh, that's all I got. Yeah, okay, <laughs> we're going up. We're in the desert, we're on a cinder road. I feel like I'm home, baby. I feel like I'm home. Anyway, cinder, ponderosa, sagebrush, probably some manzanita out there. 
Awesome. 60 miles an hour on a gravel road is probably not so smart, but I don't care because it's fun. I'm having a blast all day. So uh, I saw a sign a few miles back that said we're in the, uh, we're actually in the Fort Rock Trail system, so. But I think we're gonna do this out and back to Pine Mountain, that huge behemoth right there. It's Pine Mountain. I see a real terrible trail that goes straight up, but I think there's one that winds around. I just wanna see how long it is. It's four miles to the Pine Mountain, what do you think? All right, let's do the four, the three mile, four miles to the top. There's a campground up there. I wanna check that out. Closed. Lame. That was a trail though. There's literally an, an, an ATV, a uh, motorcycle trail that goes up to the top of this. Straight up this hillside on the left. Whoa! We're getting some whoops in today, boys! These water bars are ripe for doing stuff. I mean, come on. How do you not do something, right? We're just take it at a measured pace. It's not a race. The view is gorgeous not as witty when I'm having to actually focus on riding a motorcycle or something. This is, uh, reminds me of the road up to Taiyi at Turatec. It's a lot like that, up to and including being right on the edge of a cliff. More sand. This is a lot of sand, dude. I was not expecting that to happen. <laughs> dude, look how deep it is. You can see all the ruts. Now it's chunky. Chunky monkey. Another sharp turn. Good, these are switchbacks, like section three of the Wobder. Very sharp, very technical. Technical. Getting close, final stretch. There's a stop sign. You know you're on a good road when there's a damn stop sign. What is this? That looks like a hell of a view. Whoa! Uh, we up here. We up here. There's the observatory right there. There's the campground. I think that doesn't look like it goes up there. So this is the entrance that we can't take right now. We can't ride up to the top. Okay, well, I guess it was a fun road. We're gonna hit that view over there. I don't know where this road goes, but I'm optimistic looking at it. I really wanna see this view. Oh, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. I know I've seen pictures in the BDR video of a cool view up here. Oh, look at this! Finally got some, this is a campsite. What's up, travelers? Hey, nice bike. I had one. I'm Ben. Nice to meet you, Lucas. Russell, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Justin. You guys mind being on YouTube? Okay. Dork in the Road is my channel, so if you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, uh, not yeah. Well, you're making a cameo appearance right now. Congratulations. I'd give you a sticker, but my chapstick melted in the desert and they got all ruined. Tim, everybody, everybody, Tim. Look at that road. Well, this stop was fun and gorgeous, just like Tim, but we're gonna have to head back down and get back on the trail. Um, which is actually, that's the red gravel road, red cinder road we came in on. You can see it down there because we came around that butte and then up here to the top. So this wasn't, so I was wrong about which behemoth. There was a behemoth behind the behemoth. It was a be, by behemoth. I got nothing. Okay, anyway, we're going to ride back down, but you've seen it, so I don't know how much I'm going to film. <sighs> kind of guessing the view around this corner isn't bad, so I want to show it to you. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Damn, damn gorgeous is what it is. Hero shot right here. Okay, we're back on the main track. Let's see where it goes. My guess, Sun River. But first, we gotta go through the Newberry Crater. Well, this looks to be a fun little connecting road. This is a trail, bro. This is a trail. This is an OHV trail. Come on, this isn't a road, it's the luge. Oh my God, look at these whoops. Oh, I'm going to destroy my bags on these whoops. Yeah, this is exactly what the trails out here are like. So if you're worried you weren't going to get to ride any on the route, lies. Look at this. Sh 
<laughs> Whoa! Ass end, you need to go where the front end goes. That's not really cool, man. This is the track, dude. That's crazy to me. This is the road they picked. That's like a trail that's not a trail, officially, so you can ride on it. Whoa, big drop off. All I can say is this is very much a Nathan route. Like, and I mean that as a compliment, but he's the guy that, there could be a very easy direct path. You know, the scenery could be good, it's still technically off-road, and he will find the crappiest connecting road, even if it's twice as long, that's more fun and more challenging like this. And I just, it, it can feel his fingerprints on this route. So, good job, Nathan, kudos to you. It's enjoyable to get a ride in and get like a glimpse into your thought process, and uh, you know, just think about all the fun you must have had scouting all this, you know? It's a real taste of what trail riding up here is. So you're getting a little, a little a cereal sampler pack of Oregon riding on this route. That's another thing that's great about the way it's put together. You're getting a little everything. Well, if this isn't the luge, I don't know what the luge is. Or if it's not, then they misnamed the other section. I don't know. That was fun. Is that it? Nope. It isn't. More Nathaning. <laughs> okay, without the whoops, this is hella fun. And yeah, people still say hella, shut up. Oh, that's fun, that's fun. That's it, Nathan's section over. It was a very Nathan section. There's an optional 14 mile, it's one way out and back to Newberry Crater, Polina Lake, East Lake. And if it was four o'clock in the afternoon, I would probably suggest we go find a place up there to camp because it's gorgeous and amazing and seeing the peak would be cool. But we're making good time today. So I think we're gonna push on and try to finish section three and see if we can get into section four and find a place to camp tonight. So um, that sounds like a plan to me. We're crushing it, let's go. Go side by side. There he is. Okay, well that is a good reminder to ride right and maybe slow down. We were hauling a lot of ass on that last road. Oh, I want to jump these so bad, but really paranoid about those bags right now. And I keep forgetting they're back there, which is bad. They're like, it's a downside of them being so out of the way. It's like, I forget I'm not just out here trail riding. Like, look at this, gorgeous jump. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. Probably not. I'm gonna do some light. Light jumping, okay? Just light. Like, not like a lot, just like, like that. No big deal. Right? Like, it was no big deal. Section 3 has been the most fun so far of any of the routes. Interesting, fun riding, like you gotta pay attention. Be present, there's not a lot of mind-numbing, slow, easy gravel. It's fun stuff like this with ruts and whoops, and we had some rocky stuff, you know, farther south. But it's been a really fun day of riding so far. Look at all the trees in the shade! Oh, I'm so happy to be out of the desert. I don't know if I ever want to ride sections one and two again. I don't know. I don't love the desert riding, to be honest. Section one is definitely something to accomplish, like it is a challenge. Maybe one of the I know Wyoming's got some pretty remote sections, but that might be one of the most remote sections there are. At least, for sure up here in the PNW, it's a challenge, but it's not easy or, you know, like I said, you don't have a lot of margin for error, so I don't love section one. Section three's been a lot more fun. We're pushing on to Sun River. More sand. Uh, a little bit faster gravel. It's still kind of washed out. There's a ton of rain ruts in this that I saw on a couple of hills. So just taking it easy. I don't want to get surprised by one of those. That's what caught Mike last year. Don't need any broken legs on this trip. You hit them, you want to hit them parallel like that or perpendicular like that. Look at lava. Sorry, this is also not like the easiest road on earth. So I'd get you a better view, but I might die doing it. One more Nathan Road and we are almost to the highway, but of course he found a cutoff. I feel like he's here with us. And then a swerve to the right. Just gets to get it because I swerved to the right. Ooh, I have a strong suspicion we are very close to the end of section three because I can see Highway 20 on the map. 
getting close. We're gonna go right by Lava River Cave, which is awesome. We're not gonna stop and do it because I've done it before and it costs money to get in and it takes a while. But if you have a good afternoon and you wanna walk a couple miles underground and like lug your engine to death because you try to start off in third gear, then uh, Lava River Cave is a great stop. It's really cool, it's a really fun place. That's Highway 97, that's Mount Bachelor, and we're headed into Sun River. Oh, gas hall Section three, complete. gas hall acquiring. Probably food, too, it's about that time. It's just lunchtime, which is awesome. Well, that was it for Section three. We had lunch at Subway, met some cool guys headed the other direction. Nice to meet you guys. And now we're moving on to Section four because it's too early to stop riding today. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon, so we're gonna move towards Bend and try to find a campsite near Bend. It's good to crush more than one section in a day. Let's keep rolling. Looks like a lot of people floating, man. That makes me jealous. I'd like to do that right now. On to Forest Road 41. You can tell because there's a sign. Oh, here we go. Here's the gravel. Some ruts though. Sneak up on you in the shadows. You gotta be careful. Look like a bunch of jeepers cl cleared this section for us, so. Thanks, y'all. More fun road, I hope. Oh, this is this is too tempting to not at least wheelie off the back side of. I mean, come on, it's just stupid. <laughs> to be one of my favorite spots to camp outside of Bend, and they logged it just recently. So like, it sucks now. It used to be really shady. It's very close to town, and I think I saw a spot, so we're thinking about camping here so that we can run into town and get supplies. Just have a chill night. It's about 3.30, so a good time to stop for camp, set up, get a couple beers, enjoy life. Tim wants to have a fire, because he's Tim. He wants to cook a steak. We got in a lot of miles today. We crushed a ton, so pretty excited about that. So Tim is gonna go, he's doing firewood hunting, even though we have a special guest coming bringing firewood. But he's Tim, so it's not going to be enough firewood for Tim. It's just not. Yeah, I didn't want to ask that of special guests, but I'm excited for you guys to see special guest who's bringing several supplies. So we're just outside of Bend. As soon as we stopped, we realized we were both pretty tired and, and stopping sounded fun. We did a section and a half today, 100 miles out through Christmas Valley up into the... Oh man, it was so nice. I said it so many times in the video, but just look, trees. Like, the desert is a fun place to visit, but I don't want to live there. You know what I mean? The rest of this trip is going to be so... I was just, like, perking up so excited today to be in the woods, in on some red cinder roads. Like, this is this is my jam, bro. How do you feel about being out of the desert, Tim? Uh, I am very stoked on it. He's stoked on it. I'm stoked on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we have some shade. I'm, I'm thankful for the shade. It is a big difference. Uh, it's still hot, but this is nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, I want to die hot. It's just like, uh, I want to be in the shade hot. The temperature difference, and and it was, like, I, my spirits were so much higher today. Even yesterday, and we were having fun, but it was it was not comfortable. It was it was not fun. Update on Trav, for those of you who were, who were wondering, and you know, some of you will see this on in Instagram on real time, and that's fine. Uh, but for those of you watching the video series wondering, uh, Trav rode home. He got to his house about the same time we got to Sun River today. Went to his doctor this afternoon. Doctor confirmed he had heat stroke. So not heat exhaustion, heat stroke which was also the cause of his other issues. They ran some tests just to make sure it's not something else, but it sounds like he just got a heat stroke out there in the desert, which we knew was a possibility. Just bad luck. We're all out there together in the same conditions. And he was taking like liquid IV and stuff. Like I've been taking electrolyte pills. He just, bad dice roll, overexertion, didn't go well. So it went from heat exhaustion to heat stroke really quick. At one point he was tunnel vision about to fall off the bike. So I'm glad he stopped and rested up and I'm glad we got him out of there. But this is our spot for the night. We're gonna camp. Um, special guest is bringing some steak for Tim to cook and we're gonna have a chill out evening probably we'll get into a mr puff puff pretty excited about that and i don't want to speak too soon because i have a really bad habit of jinxing things but looking at the sections remaining we're on section four now and finishing section four is only going to take us like an hour because we have to take the bypass tomorrow because three creeks and everything is closed so the main road is closed we have to take the snow bypass which just takes us down on some there's a lot of pavement on the bypass so 
It will not take us long to get to Sisters from here. Half an hour, maybe an hour. We get to go out through the old Tumalo Reservoir, which is cool. It has a really interesting backstory, which maybe I'll regale you with as we ride through. Then it's uh, some hard stuff out of Sisters until we get to Highway 20. And then I've ridden all of Section 5 from there to Detroit. And I've ridden half of Section 6 to Olali. And if things go well tomorrow, it wouldn't be out of the question to make it to Olali and camp there. And then are we in striking distance of finishing in two days? Maybe. I don't know. That would be... This is night three. That would be five days, which is kind of what I had in the back of my head that we we're going to do it in five. We'll see. But anyway, we're only halfway done. Today went much better, and I'm excited for some campfire time and a beverage or two. We'll bring you in when all that is happening. The Conquering Hero Return. That's some impressive strapping. You like that? See, you see the versatility of the beaver tail and the giant loop luggage. You can strap two giant rounds and two logs and ride your bike like you stole it. Hey guys, guess what Tim's doing? He's putting together our favorite grill. I don't know if you remember our camping video where we had a race to put our grills together. And I finally had to stop filming. It was taking him so long I didn't have that much card space. But I hear he's got it figured out now. He was hoping to have adult supervision because Travis was supposed to be here to help, but he's gone now. So Timbo has to spread his wings and fly. I think that was quicker. Yeah, it was much quicker. That was only about five minutes. Okay, well now we wait for special guests with uh, meat. Wait for a meat <laughs> delivery. <laughs> Look, special guest is here. Special guest has arrived, but it's bad with directions that I gave her that are probably bad. Look, the special guest we've all been waiting for. It's the graceful Renagade. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for guy. coming out. Sorry for the way we smell. Oh, it's okay. I'm used to also smelling how you smell. I actually oh. showered today, which is a rarity. Wow, impressive. What's up, dude? Dude. So many stories. We're tired, but also <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> Yeah, literally I'm just sorry. not yeah. moving. Low no, power mode. The resupply truck. How is it? Was it? It's been great so far. Yeah. Look at what you, look what Tim has. Yeah, I've had these in my saddlebag all day. He's got, he's got some bat squanch. The good stuff. The yeah. good stuff. Yeah. We just want to thank you for the resupply. And uh, we've been looking forward to uh, getting to Bend because that's why I was like, Tim, we have to camp outside of Bend tonight. Like, let's just keep going because. Because we need to have Grace and her support truck. We can get, we can get. Twice. By the grace of Grace, we will have. Beers. Yes. Beers. 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 Cheers. Beers. There's one for Travis. Travis. Cheers. We love you. Cheers. Pour one out for the boy. It's also, dead. he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> he's dead to me. He left me again alone with you. So he's I was gonna say the same thing. Uh Tim, what are you cooking for us? Uh we're gonna do up some steaks tonight. <laughs> Bam. Emerald Lagasse over here. Steak. Salt Bay. I gotta find a plate. Or I'm just gonna find a flat piece of wood and eat off, eat off of that. Oh my god. I have the most reliable. Bam! Bam! That's hot. It's a good sear. Like, well done. Well, not well done. That's not what I want. I'm trying to keep it from uh, curling so much. I'm excited to eat it. This is a vegan plate. I was just gonna have a mountain house tonight, but no, delicious steak. Someone wanted steak. And who oh. delivered this delicious steak to you? Grace de Renagade. <laughs> that's quite. That's overly cooked, actually, bro. Could you not? I told you it was done earlier, and you said no. That was the exact conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ben, please uh, describe your plate situation as well. It's a piece of wood. Nailed it. How how is it eating? steak off of a piece of wood are we like truly living the camping experience right now mm -hmm. okay. well my plan was to eat mountain house meals and restaurants the whole trip so i didn't bring a plate so grace brought some plates they're made of wood how about a thank you to your chef thanks grace <laughs> <laughs> thanks sam you're welcome ben anytime What are you seasoning the steak with, Tim? This is salt, pepper, garlic, mm. and cayenne and paprika. Yum. Oh my God, so good. 10 of 10, would eat again. Okay, well, Grace bailed on us. It's fine, she had to go hang out with the real fence. No, we appreciate her. She brought us a resupply, she brought us steaks, she brought us beers. I can't imagine a better thing happening on a camping trip than someone showing up with a bunch of steaks and beers. So, Tim cooked the food expertly because he's Tim. He timmed it up and uh, we're just chilling by what's left of the campfire, waiting for the sun to go down. We're gonna go to sleep early, get up early and crush the rest of section four really quickly and get on to section five when the good stuff begins.
Good morning and welcome to day four. It's already day four of the Oregon BDR adventure. Tim is here. I'm here. We we're camped outside of Bend. Grace came out and visited us. That was awesome. Got some delicious liquid refreshment, had some steaks, and passed out super early. I went to bed at 9.30. I'm exhausted. So it's about 6.30 now, and our original plan was to pack up first thing and just head into Sisters for breakfast. I think that's still the plan, but it's cold. Like, after being in the desert for the last few days, it's interesting to wake up and there's a breeze that is very chilly. So it'll be interesting riding in, in mesh gear this morning. But we want to get an early start before it gets too hot. See if we can make some miles. So we're on section four. We'll finish section four easily because we have to take the bypass because Three Creeks Road is closed. So we can't go up to Three Creeks, that cool section, unfortunately. But I've been there a bunch of times. Just can't get through right now. So we're going to take the bypass around the sisters. Stop the sisters for some food and a resupply because I'm out of water and everything else. And then it's a harder section this morning out up to the expert section, Cache Mountain which is a beautiful, amazing view. And then up to Detroit and beyond is my guess. I'd like to make Olali tonight if we can, maybe farther. Don't know. So I'm going to pack up, get going, I think. How you feel, Tim? Feeling good. Tim's feeling good, he says. It helps when we go to sleep at 930 and pass right out. All right, we're going to get going. Just like that, it's as if we were never here. Camp is all back on the bikes. We're mostly geared up. We're going to head out towards Sisters this morning. And uh, we're going to take the bypass, like I mentioned, because Three Creeks Road is closed. And hopefully get some breakfast, gas, water, and fuel up for the next leg. I'm exhausted. Like, I know that I mentioned at the beginning of this trip that I didn't do the, uh, didn't get into the shape I wanted to be for this trip. And I'm definitely feeling the effects. Like, about 9 o'clock last night, I was like, yep, I need sleeping. And I was just mad that it was still light out. And finally, I just went in the tent at 9.30, and I think I passed out immediately. Got up once to pee and slept straight through till 6 a.m. So I'm definitely tired from this much physical exertion. That's just like an update on that. If you're a person like me who is maybe not in the best shape and wants to come out and do one of these trips, just be prepared to be tired. And uh, there was a point yesterday where I didn't want to stop, or I thought I didn't want to stop until we stopped. And I was like, thank God we stopped. That's the word stopped about 32 times. So I thanked Tim for that because it was his idea. Because I was like, let's push on. Why not? Thinking, it, you know, if it was hot, I didn't want to sit and cook in it. But we found some shade and it was good. So uh, cooler temps from here on out should be a lot less, at least heat exertion going on. It's going to make things a lot more comfortable. Those first two sections, man, they were brutal. Well, we're going to head out here in a sec. All right, forward to Sisters. I can get it in gear. It's an interesting exit here. Probably dump it right here first thing. Oh, there's a huge fucking ditch. I didn't know that. Oop. Okay, well, that bodes well for the day. On to Sisters. Love it up here. Okay, we are between Bend and Sisters, off the pavement. So this is just a bypass. The actual route is far more interesting and you get to go up the Three Creeks Lake, which is amazing. Highly recommend it as the road is open. I think August is when Three Creeks Lake Road is supposed to open back up. At least there's a little dirt on the bypass. That's good, that's a good thing. And not terrible views of the Three Sisters either. Look at that. That's the road I normally come in on. Okay. So this is the Tumalo Dam, and this is the old Tumalo Reservoir, and it actually has a really interesting backstory, which I will summarize so you don't have to listen to me talk about it. But supposedly, I don't know, 100 years ago, see this is the dam, they were going to do a reservoir here. So this guy came to town, I can't remember his name, and convinced everyone he was going to build this dam so there would be this reservoir and there would be all kinds of irrigation water. See, there's like a tower for the dam and all that. So this was going to be a lake. All kinds of irrigation water. So lots of families moved here while the dam was being built. You know, bought property and they built, they set up a whole town. I can't remember the name of the town. It was the guy's name. Like, they named it after him. Well, they filled up the lake for the very first time and all the water immediately drained out because this is all very porous lava rock. Uh, and the guy skipped town <laughs> with like all their money. And uh, so it was totally a town. Tumalo is a town built by a con man based on a lie. And that dam back there was the lie. So they hanged him in effigy, I guess, because he was long gone, so they couldn't actually hang him. But that's, where the, that's why the Tumalo Reservoir is not a reservoir. Today is the 4th of July, so I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of people out. So pro tip, always check the BDR website for the most updated tracks before you go because I had an older version in Gaia from when it first released in February and I updated them, or I should say I downloaded the updated tracks and put them into Gaia on the first day of the trip, but it's really hard to tell at riding speeds 
which is which? Oh, I know exactly where we are now. So, I let us down what it looks like the, was the old bypass on the old tracks. But fortunately, I know this road and I know right where it goes, so we're good. I don't recommend improvising if you're not in an area that you sort of know. But uh, we figured it out. So, update those tracks because things change and they make changes constantly, which is cool. Highly recommend it if you're in town. Stop in at the gallery. Good breakfast at the gallery. It's not quite 10 o'clock. We're gonna get gas here in Sisters and head out onto section five. And uh, it's already hot. And it's supposed to be like 94 in Detroit today, which is where we're headed, so. Not excited! I thought we were gonna get out of the hot temperatures. Nah, we are, it's hotter here than it was in the desert, or it will be in Detroit today. Interesting. There's some rain ruts and embedded rocks. Probably, I don't know, five, ten miles out of Sisters at the moment. If that. Have I mentioned how happy I am to have trees? Pretty damn happy. So we're not far out of Sisters, but this is the bonus track, Skylight Cave. It's only 0.8 miles. So we're gonna go check it out. I'm not really interested in doing a bunch of hiking in these boots, but if it's close to the road, it would be cool to pop in and give it a look. I feel like not even a mile off worth checking out for sure no sign on the road so is it like a local secret or what I thought for sure there'd be a sign saying that it was down here yeah this looks suspiciously like a parking lot yep huh. well why park when we can ride there it is that's it right there. Okay, well, it is easy to get to then because it's right there. Oh, and there's a ladder. It's literally right here. Okay, fun, that's fun. So this is it, Skylight Cave. Oh yeah, so there's a ladder and you climb down into the cave and uh, there's a skylight down there somewhere. Interesting. Well, this is nice to know that this is right on the road. So no hiking like we attempted uh, cracking the ground yesterday and it was at least a quarter mile off the road. He's going in, ladies and gentlemen, with the mouth mount GoPro. Well, it's not even attached. No, it's not. So I could just knock it over and that's your home now. Well, this is very easy to get to, so worth checking out on your way on. We're on section five now? Yeah, five is to Detroit, six is to government camp, seven is to Hood River. So yeah, we're on section five. Tim is back from his spelunking adventure and uh, we're gonna get back on the bikes. Head for Cache Mountain. Oh man, oh yeah, sand, cinder, loose rock chunk. We got terrain here, boys. We got some terrain. Sand, rock. Rain rut. <laughs> Down. Logs. Whoops. More sand. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Washington. We're very close to cash now. Oh yeah, we're getting out there now. We're getting out there now. Mount Washington looming large. I always wondered what was out this way. Never gotten out this far because we always go to Big Lake and just ride the OHV area. But now I know. It goes all the way to Sisters, which I had heard but never actually ridden. Woo! -ah. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, brother! That mountain is so damn close. That's cash right there. I don't know, this might be, no, this is it, okay. Yep, we're turning right down here. At the base, I know exactly where we are. I've been here a ton of times, hell yes. It's a great ride up there, great ride. Hello friends, Dork in the Road here. We are on Oregon BDR section five and we are about to do the Cache Mountain expert section. First thing is the whoops and the view. Look at the three sisters over there. 
Mount Washington is to my right, so close it looks like you can touch it. Bed of rocks, whoops, sand, all at once. Testing all your skills. <sighs> this is like exercise and I hate it. Ooh, okay. Maybe this is why it's expert now. Side by side coming down because, uh, ooh, oh, And you know what? There's no shame in waddling this if you want because it is crazy loose, but yeah! And of course, there's a bunch of side by sides up here because that's my life. Oh, but look at the view. Look at the view. That is something. That is something. And that, my friends, is the expert section, Cache Mountain. There he is, Tim, the conquering hero. This is a real highlight. So if you feel like you're up to coming up here, I definitely recommend it. Now this camera makes everything look so much farther away, but Mount Washington is right there. Like I can see the contours of the cliff faces. The three sisters are there. Uh, you got Broken Top in the distance, and then over here, it just gets better. That's Hayrick Butte. Hoodoo's over there. Behind it, you can see it just on top. There's a little, there's a bunch of lakes, little lake over there. That is Three Finger Jack. That is Mount Jefferson. The view is just spectacular. Pretty sure that one there is Meadow Lake. You can see Big Lake off in the distance. That's Highway 20. Oh, and then on the other side, you can see all the way to Black Butte. It's spectacular. Like this is just one of the most amazing places I've ever been. And if you have the ability and the confidence to get up here, it is very worth it. That is Black Butte, the Butte. That is Black Butte, the ranch. That is Mount Jefferson. That is Subtle Lake down below. And that is Blue Lake right there. Called that because well, it's blue. Can't beat the views from up here. You just can't. <sighs> One of my favorite spots on earth. <sighs> Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And that, Cache Mountain. That was my first BDR expert section. I feel like it doesn't count because I've ridden it before. But it does count because I did it. So don't miss it, Cache Mountain. Yeah, I wouldn't want to bring the Tanare up here, or at least I would think very seriously about it. Okay, headed back down. The views are even better on the way down, but I'm not going to look at them because I'll ride off the cliff and die. So, the guy got his Scrambler 1200 stuck up here like two days ago. He posted in the group. Yeah, fortunately, there's a really convenient hillside right here. Now you can just, just waddle along if you need to. Damn it, I'm fucking in my head right now. Not even, not even just riding it like I need to. Okay, well... That was actually a little bit of a situation. Okay. That's what I get for talking shit about how easy this is. It isn't. I take it back. Okay. Okay, universe, I take it back. It is, in fact, an expert section. That's all good. Definitely some effort required. Look at that view, though. Holy hell. So, look at this, man. This is, I mean, this, the juice is worth the squeeze, is all I'm saying. If you can get up here, it is worth it, because holy shit, it looks amazing. Nothing like it. Yeah, you want speed through this loose stuff. You don't want to slow down, stay off the front brake. I'm talking to myself as much as I am you, the viewer. Oh yeah, just trying to avoid this rock. Uh-huh, 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 okay. And by rock, I mean log. I was trying to avoid that log. I love this road. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna love it with a fully loaded bike, but I absolutely love coming out here in a dual sport and just ripping this, this road. It's got plenty of whoops, which I don't love, but rocky, sandy, just fun, varied terrain. It's really fun to just blast. So, um, and this is the regular route. So there's a harder bypass. That road's super fun too. This is a lot more technical. Uh, this is gonna be your sandy, fast, flowy. And the other one's gonna be like technical, challenging, fun. I like this road. I like it a lot. It's got some of the shit like this that I forgot about. I need to go left, or needed to go right, but I didn't. So here we are.
washed out. A little rocky, technical, climb, hill climb. Another hill climb, rocky shenanigans. Followed by its cousin, Bullwinkle shenanigans. That's a Rocky and Bullwinkle joke. I don't know if you got that. Probably not. Probably not. Pretty highbrow, you know. There's a lot of camping out here, but you gotta like mosquitoes a lot. Ah, moving is so good. We're going left here. Okay, we're gonna go through the OHV area now. You don't need a permit because this is a public road, but there are a bunch of OHVs crossing, or there will be OHVs, motorcycle stuff crossing, and it is sandy as shit. So, but I think once we get out around this and over Potato Hill onto Highway 20, we're pretty much out of the sand. So, let's get it done. Yeah, very sandy, bro. Very squiggly, squiggly front wheel. Lots of whoops. Yep, there's a the trail crossing. So you just gotta be careful. Could be side by sides coming at you from every direction. Also, I keep hitting my front brake, which is really stupid in the sand. I almost ate shit once already. So as long as you stay on the road, on the route, you don't need a permit. If you decide to hit these trails on the side, you're technically supposed to have a permit. Rocky! Man, that's a lot bigger rocks on this than I remember. Jeez. Just pick good lines, kids. Pick good lines, that's all you can do. The sand is honestly, it's not too deep most of the places. It's only like an inch or two, but it gets, you do hit deep patches. <sighs> oh, just gent gentle waves of sand. Gently destroying my lower back as I sit down because I'm fat and tired. and should be standing. Yeah, this is all sand, it's all sand. Street legal vehicles only, no always fees. What is cool is when you're riding one that is both. Whoa, that's right. So that was the Sandy M OHV area we just rode through. Really fun riding if you like the rocky sandy technical stuff. Stupid sandy hill climb. Look at this banked sandy corner, man. Like, this is, there's some riding required is all I'm saying. Some riding required. Not an easy route. Hey, out of the sand, into the dirt and rocks, up around the corner, Potato Hill. This is worse than I remember. Holy crap. Woo! <laughs> that, was, that was something. That was something. What a section, Nathan. If you don't enjoy challenging terrain, you won't like this route. So that's Highway 20. So we, we jump on Highway 20 for like four miles and then back off at uh, the Lava, Lava Lake Snow Park. So this is the Lava Lake Snow Park. It's where you get off of Highway 20 and continue north to Detroit. This is just a paved forest road for a while. A really cool campsite up here at the intersection of two major roads. Yeah, it's not even taken on the 4th of July. Oh my God. There's a fire pit. It's amazing. This is a great campsite right by the river. I wish it was about three hours later. I'd be like, let's camp here. But it isn't, so we're not going to. Look, gorgeous. Gorgeous spot. So the rest of section five is basically this. Well manicured, maintained gravel roads. No real surprises unless there's snow up on top still. So uh, I'm just gonna catch up with you all when we get to Detroit and finish section five. And I'm assuming have a late lunch, gas up, and then start section six. All right, on to Detroit. Okay, well, I didn't make it here when I scouted it because the snow was in the way, but this is Tule Lake. That's pretty. I don't see any campsites. Well, I guess that's one. Gorgeous. Mountain lakes. Okay, now for, for reals on to Detroit, probably. There it is, there she is. There's Detroit Lake. So this is the town of Detroit, which many of you know, two years ago, nearly burned to the ground uh, in the wildfires we had. It's really cool that the BDR comes through here and has, has made it so that we can provide financial support for the people in this town as they rebuild. And we're gonna start by buying gasoline. 
Made it to Detroit, Mountain High Grocery. Tim, me, we're gonna sit on this bench and eat a bunch of deli food we bought because it's that or the restaurant that didn't even look like it was open. There was nobody in there. Um, and the other restaurant across the street sadly burned down. So uh, make sure when you're in Detroit on the BDR that you support this community and the businesses that are attempting to rebuild after the horrible, horrible fires that burned most of this town to the ground. So we're gonna catch our breath, get a little hydrated, and then final push towards camping for the night. You know, there's some fun riding between here and there and we'll uh, see where we end up. Straight boom howling it. It's hot and I'm ready to go up again. We're leaving this paved logging road for a gravel logging road. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. There's a lot of this between us and Old Ollie. some more pavement twisties but these come with a twist they're twisties with a twist because there's a bunch of like messed up sections that you just like come around a corner all thinking you're leaning it in like rossi and there's like a big hole <laughs> or like just straight gravel and you're in a full lean so you gotta keep your eyes up on this section up here on top of the mountain just don't overcommit to the corners is all i'm saying kids just like look right here gravel Ooh, and pavement and gravel big hole oh more holes and pavement I feel like when i narrate the road conditions it's like a it's like a color play by play okay he's leaning left into the corner and there are some shadows that he's navigating and he's keeping his eyes open pine cones and uh pavement and shadows and leaning left and oh you can see here he's using the brakes to slow down clever up on top you see there's nothing above us except for over there so we're on the very top of this ridge kind of cool there's some scenery up here in the Oregon BDR did you guys know I had no idea I thought I was gonna see cool mountains and stuff where the route leaves NF 46 you can tell because it says old Lolly in the middle of the damn road in case you're wondering what's up here definitely seen better days I'm a little worried about the lack of shade by the lake now that we're over here I'm tired I'm ready to camp ready to camp weird I really like the idea of not setting up a tent but I also really like the idea of sitting right here so maybe if I sat right here for a while I feel better about setting up a tent so Olali Lake is obviously gorgeous, beautiful here. They have a cool little store that's open till seven and they have ice and beer, so tonight's gonna be good. But we just reserved the site and we're gonna go. I'm honestly gonna go take my chair out and just sit there until I feel like putting my tent up, but step one is go back over there. So we got site 12 right on the water. Oh, what a great place to spend the night. I've always wanted to camp at Olali, here we are. Not a terrible way to spend what I think may be our last night on the trail. Check out this campsite. Oh, kind of a hell of a view. Holy crap, gorgeous. I've always wanted to stay here, so I'm glad we were able to make it happen. They have a little store that has cold beer and ice. So I got some ice in my dry bag to keep the beverages cold. And I think I hear Tim on his way back with uh, his favorite camping accessory that they also sell here. I almost made it. <laughs> How many did you lose along the way? All but three, it looks like. <laughs> well, damn it. Now I got to help you pick them up. Apparently they don't sell firewood in bundles. They just 
give you an armload or something. I know we dropped a piece over here. I saw it. Oh, Tim. What a doofus. And that's why you should not, not let Tim collect firewood unsupervised. Or even purchase it, apparently. Somebody needs to watch some giant loop instructional videos to figure out how to use that beaver tail. Right idea for execution. I hope he's not going back for more that will also get spilled all over the damn place. All right, well, I'm going to enjoy a brewski or two ski. My tent's set up, so there's nothing to do but sit here and rest. I feel way better today. I was wiped out yesterday. We're going to chill out for a bit. Thanks for being here. So, if it's our last night, Tim, your fire's literally starting itself. <laughs> he literally didn't start this. He just, like, threw a bunch of stuff in there like he was planning to start it. And there was... It's actually... It's yeah, actually... there were hot coals from this morning, apparently. <laughs> and it's going. It's a fire. He didn't even make a fire. It's just a fire now. So... <laughs> It's like he just really wanted to have a fire and he didn't want to wait till it was dark or whatever, but we don't have that much wood, so That's a fire is a fire. Themselves. I brought three cigars on this trip thinking I'll, I'll use them for special occasions, I'll use them sparingly. And it's if it's our last night, I still have two left, so I gotta try to get Tim to smoke the other one. <sighs> what a trip. I'm proud of us, no matter what happens tomorrow. I think that the section ahead of us is not that hard. Except for supposedly there's a rocky section that's hard. I can't imagine it's any worse than anything we've done. Honestly, probably the hardest thing we've done was that river rocky section on the when we were trying to get our way out of the desert. Yeah. That's probably the hardest thing we've ridden. It's not even on the track. I will say I'm sore and tired, but not as sore and tired as I expected to be, given... You know, I didn't uh, prepare for this the way that I had originally planned. So it can be done in five days. I would probably recommend six because we didn't stop at everything. What are we cooking, Timbo? Uh, today we're going to have a chili mac with beef. That is one of the only good Mountain House meals. It's true. I will, say, I will tell you this. He's only risking this because we're very close to an outhouse. That's true. Don't eat the packet. I literally always forget to take it out. Oh, okay. Or do. Oh, God. <laughs> Why did that just happen? <laughs> this guy eats his Mountain House raw. <laughs> Instant regret. He just grew. Yeah, how was that? <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You're going to be tasting Chili Mac for the next two weeks. Mm. Yeah. Two hours later. What you get with the jet boil? <laughs> it's hot. Yeah, your old stove, that would have been like two hours. How is it that no matter how long you let these sit, they're never ready? How's your gourmet meal, buddy? It doesn't feel very gourmet. You ever think about letting it sit for another two hours? Mm, might have to. What if I put it in the fire? Yeah, that would make it really spicy. I feel like we're filming a cereal commercial right now. He likes it. He really likes it. Mm. You can't even fake it. <laughs> All right. I'm just looking for the toy in the bottom. Mm. Is that a fire starter? Good morning. Welcome to day five of the Oregon BDR adventure. Today is day five and we're hopeful, knock on wood, this will be the last day. We think there's about 140 miles, which doesn't sound like a lot on pavement, but on dirt it really is. We've been keeping up that pace the last couple days and we're out of the desert and the super rocky stuff, so it should be a lot more mountain road, faster gravel, kind of like yesterday, second half of yesterday. A lot of the places we're going, Tim has ridden, so I think we can make good time and maybe even hit Hood River by dinner time or something like that. So that's the goal. Tim is still sleeping, though I'm 
thinking my talking is maybe waking him up. It's almost seven. I would feel bad, but he sleeps with earplugs, so it should be okay. So do I. We don't want to listen to each other snore. A big pro tip for those of you maybe getting started camping. This is something that took me a really long time to discover, but a sleep mask and earplugs make all the difference. The sun comes up at four o'clock in the morning. You're in a tent that isn't very shady. A sleep mask sounds stupid but it's awesome because you can it's dark as far as your eyes can tell and earplugs you know they're great for drowning out the noise of your campmates and also just if you're a person who like jumps at every single little noise at night no more noises and you got to have them on the motorcycle anyway or you should so can't wait to see the columbia today know that we've accomplished this goal and also that i get to sleep in my own bed the beast stirreth in its den eager to cruise for sunlight it breaks free of the cocoon and see it searches for sustenance. Or it cooks jet boil mountain house meals in its tent. Oh, I got the thermosel going, dude, so... You gotta come out here to the skeeter free zone. It's not bad, but it was annoying. Oh. I mean, it's not heart mountain bad, but... At least it was only one annoying and not like a bunch of them. Yeah, just annoying. Could you imagine it was like five annoying? Oh my god. Yeah, that suck. Five annoyings? I don't like where this is going. Getting packed up. We're almost there. Almost there. Tim's getting his stuff loaded up. I've got most of my gear on. It always astounds me how much stuff we get on these bikes because like it's a very full campsite. And then we packed up and there's nothing. Good for us or we bring too much stuff. I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty minimal on this trip. I don't have a lot of extra stuff. Getting a little warmer. We're ready to get on the bikes and tackle the trail. So goodbye, O'Lolly Lake. Hello, Mount Hood. Here we come. That was graceful. Okay, well, Olali, we're about to bid you a fond farewell. We're gonna hit the road and finish this damn thing today. Crush it. So excited to see Mount Hood, to see Bennett Pass, and to see my wife and my dog in my bed in the shower, because I smell like an elephant, but not like the cute kind. Tim's doing Tim stuff, which is to say, taking a really long time. Cool little campground and shockingly empty considering yesterday was the 4th of July, so. And it's first come, first serve, so I think I'll be back. It's pretty cool here. All right, well, we're gonna blaze out of here, so. Onward. Okay, approaching the intersection, we're leaving the optional Olali uh, spur, I guess, and headed back on the route. That's the route right there. Officially back on section six, headed towards government camp. Let's go, baby. Well, here's something. Here's something good. Here's a Nathan Road, if I ever saw one. Yeah, all of these motorcycle tracks on these roads I probably have seen very little use over the last, I don't know, forever. And then it's all chewed up because all the BDR guys are now hitting it this week. Oop, tree, oop. More tree. That one's got me right in the face. Oh yeah, technical. 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 Critical. You get that reference, you're a nerd. And I love you. Look out for Ewoks, bro. Ewok crossing. Serious force of indoor vibes. Forest Road 42. That's a corner. Truck. Oh, redacted ahead. What do you think the truck is doing that they can't tell us? Uh, dissecting aliens? A little bit more interesting stuff. A little rock here, got some rain ruts. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. There's a bunch of water bars on this one. Summit Lake! Hey! Well, let's take a look at this. Well, that's kind of gorgeous. Kind of gorgeous. I don't know how I'm going to get this out of here, but it's such a good picture I have to take it. So Tim's gas light is on, and it shouldn't be, because we should have about the same amount of fuel. So uh, we're gonna play it safe and duck out 
to the nearest gas station. So we're gonna lose about 10 or 12 miles of the route, but I'm, I don't, we're not gonna roll the dice with this on the last day. We're gonna get him some gas and figure out what's going on. This lake is beautiful. I said earlier that I would come back to Olali, but now I think I wanna come up here, just stop at the Olali store on the way and grab uh, supplies, if you know what I'm saying. Because this place is completely empty and it's gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna follow Timbothe to the gasoline. It's Mount Hood peeking out. We're getting there. We made it. That is a good feeling. That is a good feeling. Breakfast of champions. Corn dog, Gatorade. But don't worry, don't worry, I'm not a weirdo. I also got some zingers, even though they don't have the good kind. Uh, this is not officially the end of six, section six, but we're not gonna go into government camp. So for us, it pretty much is. We're fueled up, ready to tackle section seven, get to Hood River today. I'm gonna eat this corn dog first. Not just any corn dog, but chili cheese corn dog. Oh. That is old and delicious. On to section seven. And the end of the route, let's hope. We can dream, baby. Mount Hood, I see thee, we have come for thee. We have come to conquer, well, actually right around thee. Section seven, baby. Section seven. That's a mountain. Damn, dude. What a mountain it is. So that's Mount Hood, our friend, Mount Hood. It's a mountain, it's named after Mr. Hood. Bob Hood is, is General Jason Hood. I don't know, I don't know. I should know that, I live here. Whatever, I don't know. Pretty cool, pretty cool. General Bartholomew Hood. This camera's not doing it justice, but just like Mount Washington, when we were up on Cache Mountain, it feels like it's so close you can just reach out and just tussle its little hair right on top. Just give it a little tussle and say, you're a good kid, Mount Hood. You're a good hood, Mount, Mount Kid. Okay, well, that's the viewpoint, but I want to get back on the route. Definitely stop at that viewpoint because it's bomb. It's a good place to see the mountain if you're into, like, looking at mountains and stuff. <laughs> This is the entrance to Bennett Pass. It's supposed to be a highlight of this route. I've never ridden it, so I'm excited to see it. It's a rough road, which, gee, I hope we can handle. I hope we can do it. Yeah, well, that's got a bunch of closure notices. That's a, that's how you know it's fun. Okay, well, immediately there's a squirrel catcher. This is narrow, dude. I bet this is interesting in the winter. You're right on the edge. Whoa. Yeah, this is, uh, this is treacherous. Damn it, I have to stand up. I'm so lazy. I'm almost done. I don't want to work anymore. So the views of Mount Hood out here are terrible, obviously. It's just garbage. You can't see a damn thing. Look at that thing. That is spectacular. We are five minutes into this road. Oh, do I need to look majestic? I like that it's a black diamond. For what though? It's, uh, snowmobiles? Cross country skiers? What is it? What is that sign for? Oh, four wheel drivers? Jeepers? Jeepers creepers? This would be a fun drive. This is like a road? Question mark? I think I mentioned it already, but uh, there's been enough traffic on this road that we are just going to go nice and easy today. Yes, I will do my best to stay right. You're all like, run right. I know, but sometimes there's not a good line on the right and you need to take the left. Okay, I think I need another gear here. Yeah. Oh, jeez, this is, this is no joke, bro. And the consequences for failure are uh, significant. Okay, 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 get out of your head. Get out of your head and just ride. That was weird. This is not difficult compared to what we've done, but... Ooh, that cliff for a second, it got me, it got in my head. Yeah, I mean, it's intimidating when you're right here on the edge of a cliff and it's not the easiest road in the world to ride a motorcycle on. Okay, good. Well, people said section seven had some, had some sections that were a little puckery. That's one, so that's cool. Yeah, the problem is the uphill line is, Uphill line is always the more solid, but it makes it awful hard to ride right when you're going the other way. Well, 
this section is once again not a cakewalk there's some difficulty it's not like the hardest single track i've ever seen but you definitely need some confidence and commitment to get through a lot of this stuff especially in light of the consequences of failure so i just this oregon bdr is not a beginner route it isn't you need to be pretty confident Definitely a little rocky. Like, look at that right there, a rock. That's how you know it's rocky because of the way that it is. On account of all the rocks. Where the f am I? I'm not even on the route right now. Weird. I think I took, totally went the wrong way. But I'm on the route now? I took a wrong turn. I did. Where? I don't know. I wonder if Tim followed me or if he took the route. Oh, I just took, I just cut out a big chunk of it. I did. <laughs> Oops. That's not good. I gotta go back. Okay, but it was just right back there. Tim's probably in front of me now. He's not gonna know what happened to me. My bad. All right, turning around. <sighs> we end up back here eventually. Well, Tim has definitely passed me and he's not gonna know it. So, that's not good. Hopefully he'll stop and I'll catch him. My bad. I was saying this morning, you always get two or three blown turns, but that one was pretty bad. Here's my turn. I zigged where I should have zagged. I went left instead of going straight. I was supposed to go straight. My bad. Oh, well, this is fun. So now I gotta go a little faster to try to catch Timbo. But not super fast because there's a bunch of sketchy cliffs out here. Yep, that was stupid. Target fixated on that one. And exactly what I thought was going to happen happened. I found some pavement. Views aren't terrible. Views aren't terrible at all. Still trying to catch Tim, but I was able to text him, so hopefully he gets it. We actually have service out here for basically the first time on the whole route. Well, the Barlow Road is closed, so I guess that answers the question of which way he went. If he's still ahead of me, I, I'm sure he is. So I guess I'll keep going until I find him. That's sad, I want to ride the Barlow. Oh well, there's always another day. For now, I have to find Tim. Okay, we're off onto the gravel again. Still no sign of Tim. It's super weird. He's going to watch this and be mad at me, but like... I always stop when I'm leading every 15 or 20 minutes just to see him catch up to make sure he's not troubled and get a flat or something. And uh, he should have figured out by now that if I haven't done that, I'm not in front of him anymore. That's some more fun gravel. I got Trav trying to call Tim now for me to let him know where the hell I am, but it's not working yet because he's on, I'm sure he's out of service wherever he is, but hopefully he can get through. I don't know. Anyway, this is uh, Oregon PDR Section 7. Found some more fun gravel and a bug just hit me in the eye. So, you know you're riding dual sport now, boys. Ooh, I'm gonna ask this guy if he's seen a motorcycle. Have you seen a black motorcycle go by? Uh, out on the asphalt way back there we did, but I don't have any idea where he went. Okay, what, so he, but he passed you? But it's like miles and miles back there on, a, on the asphalt. Okay, just making sure he's still in front of me. He thinks I'm in front of him. Which is a problem. Yeah, yeah, so. Cool. Alright, thank you. Well, at least I know he's in front of me, probably. It has to be Tim. I haven't seen a single other motorcycle out here today. And he's on this route, so that's good. It's rocky, dude. Rocky. This is a cool road though. Cool road. It's fun. It's very BDR. Riverbed. Some rocks, eh? Damn, son. Oh yeah, damn, dude. It's total riverbed style. Rocky goodness. of it. A lot of it. Cool. Oop, looks like some rockiness on the edge of a cliff. My favorite. <sighs> oh, more rocks on the cliff. Wow, cool view though. Pretty neat. All 
all these landslides that they've just built shelf roads through. Reminds me of section three on the Wobder, except the shelf roads there also slid off. So you gotta go through these crazy gullies that are uh, not that cool, man. Well, we're almost to the point where I came across earlier and cut out everything I've done since by accident, so yay. Like that line. That's the one I've got. This left side is a lot better. I should stay over here. It's like what a smart person would do. This is it. This is where I came in and I didn't need to. Is it? No. Right? There's gotta be. That was that it? No. No way, dude. That was no, it's right here. Okay. Fuck. That was not a good road. That did not look like a road. Oh. Okay. Fuck. Road. That did not look like a road. Oh. We've been separated for an hour. He finally catches up and then doesn't even stop. Scared myself. We got ourselves a rocky climb here. Better stand up, you idiot. Get into second gear. Yeah, this route is not easy. It's not easy. Damn, yeah, this is such a riverbed. Like, it's just runoff city. There's no dirt, no topsoil, it's all rocks. Very loose, not easy, not easy. So I definitely wasn't expecting all this today when I talked about how we were out of pinch flat territory and had an easy ride for the rest of the run. No, this is definitely something, for sure. Yep, solidly intermediate throughout. This is too much like exercise for me, it's stupid. I hate it. I guess I should have gone opposite route to find him, but I just, I really thought he would stop. It was a very interestingly treacherous section with this huge, super deep rain rut down the side. Oh good, it continues on. That's like a foot deep right there. Tim got my message. He said stop. I'm gonna stop at the viewpoint. There it is! That's gotta be the viewpoint, eh? Oh! Holy shit, is it ever? I don't wanna get too close to the edge, thanks. Okay, I'm done. Holy hell. That's a viewpoint. Damn, dude. <sighs> kinda tired of this road, to be honest. It's exhausting, and that doesn't look like any fun. Find me somehow. Explain that. Can't explain it. it. Just happened. How did you get back behind me? When you passed me when I was standing next to the road waiting for you. Where? Back at the intersection. When you turn up the hill. Shut the, up. the part where you were like, that road sucks. <laughs> Yours there? Yeah. You rode right by me. <laughs> oh, well, I was really... Well, right in front of me. Anxious. So I'll see it on the camera. Yeah. What's that far Probably. back Probably. Yeah. I mean, I was standing in the shade. Maybe well, that's why you didn't see me. No, not Maybe he's down at the highway. I'm not I trying didn't... to abandon you. That's not... <laughs> I don't care how many miles it ahead. It sure felt like you were when you rode right by me. <laughs> I did not see you, dude. I was obviously tunnel vision. Yeah. That is an amazing view. And what a way... I mean, we're not done. But like the cap, the cherry on top of this route. 
is just this really interesting chunky road and these gorgeous views of Mount Hood. And we've come around all the way around, so uh, pretty neat to see. Tim is back with us. Apparently I rode right past him at that last intersection that I didn't enjoy. So probably somebody who's editing this video will roll back the footage and like circle him and be like, Tim, right there. Uh, but I didn't see him. Probably halfway, got some more chunky crap to get through. Look at this road all the way around and around the corner up there. That's where we're going, so yeah. I'm just glad Tim's alive, that's all. There goes Timbo. No, that's not bad, it looked way worse than it was. It's not a cattle guard, it's a bridge. Or the runoff doesn't wash the road out. That's smart, actually. Unlike on the other side where they don't have that and the road is like destroyed, obliterated. Destroyed-erated, obliteroid. Obliteroid? That sounds like hemorrhoid, which is a bad thing to have, so. Maybe it's fitting, I don't know. More jump. Ooh, chunky, 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 chunky. Can't pull this chunky suit. More chunk, more scree, more shelf roads on landslides with loose rock and trees that are like, hey, high five. Hey, high five. Pretty epic up here. Pretty damn epic. Still got snow runoff because we're up that high. See, high five. Oh wait, this is a much easier road. That's what we want to see. Woo. All right, he wasn't kidding. One more mile and then we're going down the hill. <sighs> well, that was fun and cool and challenging and interesting and horrifying. So, you know, everything you want out of an adventure ride, for sure. This is a far more pleasant cruise down the backside of the hill. I'll take it. Nice little rest break after a little strenuous riding there good times yeah this route I keep saying it but it is not easy man it is not easy it's not and I and I'm afraid and this is not to disparage any members of our community I hope you know that I like really love and support the new riders in particular because you know especially those who start at a late age like I did like you're trying something new getting out there trying to live your dreams and have adventures I totally respect that but you need to do it safely and uh, it's just not the kind of route where you can get a wild hair, I don't know, as a new rider in middle age, go buy a GS and tackle the route. Uh, it, 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 no, no, it isn't. I mean, parts of Washington, you could do that, but this route, you need to know what the hell you're doing. The potential for disaster, as you just saw, right? Like how many cliffside rocky roads were there just now? It's huge. Yeah, there's a lot of traffic on this road. Cool land cruiser though. Oh my God, it's like a whole Toyota club up here. So, if you're thinking about doing this as your first BDR, um, I, would, I would caution you against it. There are maybe sections that you could tackle. I don't even know what section I would recommend to you. Maybe, maybe section four would be something you could do uh, casually. But even then, it had a few chunky sections, some, some whoops and stuff. That, you know, and honestly, here's my opinion. I've been thinking about this. Uh, I think on, on a big bike, this route is almost an expert route. Like, you need to be very skilled and very confident and willing to commit because you can't half-ass or you're going to end up in a bad situation and, and, and hurt yourself or, or worse. So, on a dual sport, and a solid intermediate route. On a big bike, I, you need to be advanced. Maybe not expert, but advanced, at least. Or like super, super strong intermediate, but uh, with, a, with a lot of skill on big bikes in particular. So that's my advice to you if you're thinking about doing this route as we near the end is it's probably harder than you think. And I overestimate difficulty, sure. And I'm only an intermediate rider, sure. But it was hard for me, challenging in a lot of places as an intermediate rider with, how long have I been riding now? Six years experience. So one, probably the ideal bike. So, you know, just take it, just take it easy. This is not one to just jump into. Washington is a lot easier except for parts of section two and section three. <sighs> but that's my thoughts right now as we cruise down the mountain towards Hood River.
Columbia River. Oh, and the end. The end is nigh, my friends. The end is nigh. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, we're definitely in Hood River. We've been here before. It is hot. Hot, 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 hot. My bike is angry. My Tim is angry. He's not. He's not angry. But as we approach the end, I just want to say thanks to Tim and Trav. Uh, we're sorry you couldn't be here with us, Travis, but we're finishing for you, buddy. And uh, we'll get out here and do this route at some point very soon for sure. It's been a long ride. It's been a lot tougher than I expected it to be. It's been some great nights of camping with some good friends. Special appearance by Grace was fantastic. Uh, got to ride some familiar territory and a ton of unfamiliar territory. This, the BDR Slayer here, the 450L really proved itself is exactly what I needed. So um, people have been asking, how is the 450? Amazing. Like, Every dollar I put into this was totally worth it because it made this trip just so much more enjoyable start to finish to be on this bike. Tim's excited. He's on his 690. And thank you to all of you for supporting me and for encouraging me and for wanting to see this content and be a part of this journey with us. Oh yeah, but the end is right up here. It's right up here. I think we're going to make it. I don't want to speak too soon. I don't want to speak too soon. But I think we're gonna make it. Oh, that's quite an accomplishment. That's two BDRs in the bag. Cool to have one in my home state. And if you're, you know, feel like you're up to it, I would encourage you to come check it out. It's a really cool way to experience all the diversity that Oregon has to offer. Lots of different terrain. And there's the bridge, Hood River. We made it to the gorge. The beautiful Columbia Gorge that is white salmon across the river. And you can actually start the Washington BDR just a ways back that way in Stevenson. We're really close to it, actually, so it's easy to connect these two. Oh, man. This feels good. The heat doesn't feel good, but it feels good to have accomplished this. And I just, it's amazing to think back to five years ago when, you know, I was afraid to go in the woods by myself or, or ten years ago. And that's the thing I want you to take away from this is, like, I am middle-aged, I am out of shape, I am overweight. And here I am having probably the adventure of a lifetime, right? Five days in the backcountry riding from one end of the state to another on uh, on off off road on on gravel roads and through the desert and all kinds of stuff so if I can do it you can do it get out there live your dreams make your dreams happen that's what I want to see that's what I want for you that's the point of my channel is to inspire you to do what I found the courage to do and live your life your best life Timbo Timbo brothers don't shake hands Brother's got a hug. <laughs> he did it, buddy. You and me again. <laughs> uh, woe to anyone who tries to come to a BDR with us. Because we're the only ones that seem to finish. So cool. This is an epic, like, end of the track, too. That was a good call. Yeah, dude. Well, well appointed. I really want to jump in this river right now. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, wow. What a trip. What a week. I just, I'm again stoked to be here with Tim coming out of the ground like a hedgehog. Groundhog. I'm tired. It's hot and we want to get somewhere cool. So thank you for following along. I hope you enjoyed the whole series. Make sure you check out the playlist if you haven't. For now, I'm hot. He's Tim and we're going to get out of the sun. So thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. We did it. Excellent!